20 years now, West Sutherland Fisheries Trust has been carrying out sweet netting surveys in several estuaries in order to build up valuable data on post-smolt sea trout populations. Netting can be challenging due to weather, river levels, tide state and substrate composition. However, thanks to the help of volunteers, we can carry out this physically demanding task. We do aim for the lowest spring tides, but not everybody always remains dry. The bed of the Pollock estuary is rocky, which results in snags. Here, Andrew Marsham of the Pollock estate faithfully wades into the depths to free up the net and get us moving again. Although this time he seems to be regretting his route in, judging by his route out. Despite the soggy bits, it's essential to sweep the net down the pool in this way, moving from the shallow neck to the tail as it maximises the chances of catching the fish present in the pool. Variables are kept to a minimum by netting at the same spot each time we return. This keeps consistency in the method, providing a baseline for useful data such as recapture details and sea lice abundance. When closing the bag, it's vital for all team members to communicate and work together at the same pace to ensure the net is brought in evenly, meaning the float and lead lines work in tandem to maintain the bag effect of the net. Unfortunately, on this occasion we have netted a rock, making it impossible to beach the lead line and form a fully accessible bag. But on the plus side, we have netted plenty of fish. Recouping the fish can be fairly frantic. It's vital to remove the fish from the net and into the baskets as quickly as possible so that they can be placed into deeper water that is also clearer from stirred up particles. The fish are already under stress due to being trapped, so it's important to provide them with as much clear oxygenated water and cover as possible. This is done by placing the net over the baskets, which also has the added advantage of preventing the fish from jumping out before they can be processed. The fish are anaesthetised in small batches. Information on length, weight and sea lice numbers is gathered. Scale samples are taken for ageing and the fish are tagged. This data allows specific growth rates to be calculated upon recapture and helps to gain a better understanding of the relationship between sea lice, wild sea trout and cage-reared salmon. Predator damage is also noted before the fish are placed into recovery buckets prior to their release into an area of clear, quiet water. This particular spot has plenty of seaweed cover which will help to de-stress the fish as they return to their environment. West Sutherland Fisheries Trust is a charitable organisation, so if you would like to donate to us, please do so via our website. All donations are greatly appreciated no matter how small, and it all helps towards our work of protecting and conserving our freshwater environments. Mm -hmm.